Let's talk about the Big Ten. Could you imagine? I was watching last night. I was watching Central Arkansas. I was watching Austin P. And um, I was thinking about the game, and I was thinking about how great it was to just see college football on TV. But then I said, I wonder what Ryan Day is doing right now. I wonder what James Franklin, Jim Harbaugh, I wonder what they're doing right now. Could you imagine being Ryan Day last night? Could you imagine being James Franklin and Jim Harbaugh and turning on, what was it, ESPN? Turning on a nationally broadcast college football game, and it's Austin P. and Central Arkansas. And your conference has told you we cannot guarantee safety of players. We just don't have the infrastructure in place to put these fine young men on the field. However, they possess the ability at Austin P. and Central Arkansas. And they played in Montgomery, no less. So nice neutral site opener. I got to give credit where it's due. And a lot of you know who you are, too many to name. There were many of you when we first started talking about this, we've been pretty outspoken on this because we feel very convicted in where we stand on this. Uh, some of you in Big Ten country reached out behind the scenes through email and you know Twitter correspondence. Most of you were civil about it, but you said we were out of line and the other conferences would fall in line shortly and we were being very short-sighted and you defended the Big Ten's position. I think more and more, and this is where the credit is due, I have seen a lot of you backtrack on that stance and you have expressed so via email and via Twitter. And the reason is because the motivation here has become increasingly obvious. We never, ever, ever get political on this show, and you will pull every tooth out of my head before I go the political route on this show, so I'm not going to even do it tonight. But I can tell, because you're telling me, a lot of you have observed that a lot of this is far more political or at the very least legally based, as opposed to maintaining the health and the safety of student-athletes. And so you have Kevin Warren, and you have a lot of university presidents, and it's really not one face that's been tied on to this. If you've been reading and following it day by day, it's bureaucracy. A lot of you who work in the real world, you've experienced bureaucracy. You know how it works. But here's the thing about bureaucracy. It provides anonymity. So rarely do you need a plan B if you're in that bureaucracy, because plan A normally works. You run things. You control things. And here's the other thing about bureaucracy. You never have to give an account of your decision making. It's just take it and swallow it. This is what we're saying, and this is what you're going to accept. So when you do have to give an account, and when the light is shown on you, and you are, for lack of a better term, exposed, you're so inexperienced, you have no clue what to do. And as a result, you get the unmitigated PR disaster that you currently have unfolding in the Big Ten. And as a result, with all those degrees on the wall and with all those six and seven figure salaries sitting in these rooms making these decisions, they have managed to hide their motives here about as well as a Ziploc bag. That is the state of affairs in the Big Ten. You and I would be fired from running a lemonade stand if we ran it half as poorly as the Big Ten is currently being run. And yet, here we sit today. It is August 30th. We still don't know anything about a vote total. We still don't know anything about data that was used. We don't know anything. We don't even know when the season's going to start. And I'll tell you this, you don't owe me anything. I'm just some dude sitting behind a microphone. But you've got a lot of players out there and parents of players who are demanding answers, and you claim to be making these decisions because of them. So if anyone in their right mind is going to sit in anywhere up there, Chicago, Indianapolis, wherever you want to sit, and you're going to tell me they don't deserve answers, well, I'm going to call you a hypocrite. And I'm going to be right in that. And I think a lot of your constituency up there has shifted to really placing more of the blame at your feet as well, because I think a lot of them have had their eyes open to the fact that uh, that's kind of the way the decision-making process was happening all along. So now, what, what happens moving forward? Because anyone can see what we just talked about. What happens moving forward? You know these lawsuits, you know this lawsuit that was filed on behalf of the Nebraska parents last week, and it was only like eight of them, so I saw, I saw one of the Big Ten attorneys say, what are we going to do? Are we going to overturn our entire process? Are we going to unveil all of our decision-making that uh, publicly paid officials, public university officials participated in? No, God forbid we do that. What are we going to do? Over just eight people filing a lawsuit, which of course, again, bureaucracy, never have to give an account, open the floodgates. It was pretty much a dog whistle for everyone and their mother to file a lawsuit in Big Ten country. And so guess what's happening? They are in the process of doing it right now. Now, I'm not going to speculate here as I didn't do the other night and I haven't done yet. I just presented it to you in rhetorical fashion and then we left it at that. And I'm still going to leave it at that tonight. Here's what I'm asking you. Could you make any sense 
out of the reason that a conference would collectively fight so hard against providing just the mere reasoning and basis behind their decision. Who voted what? What data was used? Why the abrupt decision on, what was it, August 11th? Could you figure that out? Because I can't figure that out. But just because we can't figure it out doesn't mean there isn't a good reason. Well, scratch that. Doesn't mean there isn't a reason. Whether it's good or not is up for interpretation. But as these lawsuits move forward, and I am not a legal analyst, and I am not a lawyer, and I'm currently on track to never becoming one, but that D word, discovery, if you've just followed college football for any length of time, and you've seen the occasional high-profile lawsuits that pop up in this sport, you know what discovery has provided in the past. It's this thing that happens in the legal process, and sometimes from areas and portions of your conference where you least expect it, you get news that totally rocks the foundation of the sport, or a program, or a conference. So. I'm not speculating about what could unfold over the next week or even 48 hours in the Big Ten. Who in the world knows? Most of the head coaches up there have been in the dark, so how would I be any wiser to the process than they would? But from people who do understand the legal side of things, they keep telling us the same thing. They keep saying, it may not happen as quick as you want it to, but watch that process with those lawsuits and how many of them are filed and how hard the Big Ten fights against it. And then ask yourself, with so little being demanded, why are they fighting so hard to protect that information? Your guess is as good as mine.